Hi Brocha, thanks for uploading your pictures and for sending in the homework from last week that you sent in this week. That's great, we'll look at that. Um, you wrote that, that's fine. You wrote also that you added, you messed up with the white bands not remembering which is which. Um, you cannot find out um, which white bands you sent. All your camera remembers is if it was auto or if it was um, man, uh, if it was auto or if it was manual. So you can see here, if we bring up the the only one we're going to be able to see is one of them will be auto. So this one here is AWB. The one that says auto is AWB. The other ones we will be able to take a guess at. Um, this is for sure shade, uh, but the only one that we can know from the camera is AWB. Okay, let's jump in. So this is looking good. This is looking very good. Let's have a look at, uh, let's, let's work this out the way we always work this out. So open up a little pad over here. And now um, we're going to write down, so this is a one eighth of a second at F11 at 3200 ISO. Okay, the next picture is 1 over 15 at F5.6 at 1600 ISO. Okay, and the third picture is, this looks a little bit brighter, but let's see. This is a one quarter of a second at F8 at 800 ISO. Okay, so we've got all the stats are different. That's great. That's encouraging. Now let's see what happens here. So an 8 to a 15th is minus 1. One second. 8 to a 15th is minus 1. Um, F11 to F5.6 is plus 2. And 3200 to 1600 is minus 1, which means minus 1 plus 2 minus 1 equals 0. Excellent. 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 And then let's do the next one. From a 15th to a quarter, that is an 8th, a quarter, that is plus 2. 5.6 to F8 is minus 1. And you nailed it. 1600 to 800 is minus 1. Big pat on the back, you nailed it. Plus two, minus one, minus one equals zero. That is the correct exposure. Okay, Broche, you now understand photography better than most of the photographers in the world. Really quite amazing. Um, the, the difference for the light, the brightness here um, is one of two options. It's either because the lights are flickering, but it looks to me this is lit by a window, so that wouldn't apply. But anyway, it could be either the lights are flickering a little bit, or to do with your um, when you're when you open your aperture, you end up with a vignette um, on the entry level lenses. So that could also make a difference. Okay, good, good stuff. Okay, so this one, you know, this is great. This is a great shot. You're at 1.8. Oh, so you went, you have the lens, the 1.8. Okay. Um, you missed the focus. That's a shame. I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened there. Um, this one you nailed. That's a great shot. Love that picture. That's excellent. Um, but these two you didn't. The focus is in front. I'm not sure if your focus point was on the wrong place or something like that. But we can see here that the boy is not sharp in focus. Just to mention on the side though, these stats are absolutely perfect. Excellent. 800 ISO, 1.8, a thousandth of a second to freeze the action. Great. But the only one that you nailed, sorry, is this one. <coughs> Bless me. Um, the only one that you know is this one. The truth is, out of three pictures, it could be that um, with your camera to nail one in three using this. <coughs> pardon me. Using this technique is actually acceptable. Um, I would be taking if I was taking a picture of this kid. 
excuse me, if I was taking a picture of this kid running towards me, I would probably be taking something like six, seven or eight pictures. I would be getting down low and I'd be making sure that I had him right in the center of the frame, having my center focus point and just click, 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 click as he's running to you. Let's see. So yeah, you can see you did, I think, could be you let go of your finger at this point i can't tell because this is it seems like one second these two pictures are obviously taken at the same moment with the ai servo and continuous but it could be that you took a picture here and then because he actually moves quite a long way from here is that already bam, bam so i would actually imagine that you let go of your finger here because it's a um, nine seconds this next one's at 10 seconds but he's come quite a long way so try that again do it again because it's a really important technique to have down and it's very simple and i think you will get it down try again um but upload them for the next week because it's very important i would say there's not a photo shoot that i take where i don't use this technique of ai servo with my subject moving with my model moving towards or away from me um, it's a great picture to have in your repertoire of pictures, lots of energy, just gives a great feeling. People love these pictures. Okay, let's move on. Um, okay, so now these are excellent examples. You've clearly understood this. These are excellent examples for no need in RAW and best in RAW, okay? Um, this picture really is, there's no need for RAW in this picture. Um, the pose is a little awkward, but the actual, you've, it's a beautiful place gorgeous place you're using so you're yeah you have a very shallow depth of field but that's because you're zoomed in 135 um one second let me just see also it seems to me that you brought your lens you brought your lens after you took this one second yeah so these are yeah it seems to me that at this point you hadn't bought your 50 millimeter lens because i can see the date here this was 22nd of August this 27th of August so these ones now you're using all these 27th and this is again the 22nd so okay that's good okay good I'm happy that you went out and bought this bit bought this lens because it is awesome it is really awesome okay yeah let me quick go, go back okay so this really is a perfect example of uh, of no need for raw the 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 um, light levels are very um, <clears throat> are very comparable you need to brighten her face up a little bit and um, oh, I realize it's not a pose she's in mid walk that's why she just flipped around um, great perfect okay and this is a great example of a picture that would be helpful to be shot in raw um, you'd be able to thing is though I don't know if raw would quite be able to deal with bringing some color back in the sky over here um, but anyway, this is definitely the kind of picture that would be shot in RAW. You have to be careful with the 1.8 lens. You have to be careful when the when the sun is coming straight into your lens because it is a cheap lens. Even though it's excellent, one of it one of its disadvantages is it doesn't deal with flare particularly well. Okay, so you should really always be trying to block the light coming into your lens. Here it's coming just the sun looks like it's just popping down below the sun below the horizon uh, which works but again this is a great example of best in raw um, where we've got a high dynamic range we've got bright highlights we've got dark shadows and uh, this would definitely definitely be easier to work with in raw excellent excellent bro. excellent okay so now let's just the first the only thing we know awb is this one is awb so let's move this over here so now like you said, you missed the focus here. Missed the focus here slightly. Be careful with the 1.8. You can see the focus is just behind the little girl, so she's a little bit soft. Um, but just to to be, you've done really well. This is great. These really are great. Um, so I'm trying to see. It's difficult to see. I think this one is slightly warmer, slightly warmer. It's not, it's not such a difference here. I can see for sure this one's shade. Okay. Basically, I can't read really, from, from the pictures you've taken. I can't give you a definitive um, answer to what's what, but the rules are like this. By default, you're shooting in sun. Okay. 
that your camera should always be set to sun. If you see that the pictures are too cool, that can happen and does happen quite regularly, then change to cloud, okay? Especially later on in the day that happens, change to cloud. If you're in sun and you see the pictures are a little bit warm, that happens less regularly, quite irregularly, then go to AWB. In regards to using shade, it's very rare that shade is going to be useful. But once you've made a decision with your white balance, like for example, this picture and this picture and this picture, the white balance is all completely acceptable. Perfectly good, perfectly good. Um, so once you've decided that you're going to go with, with sun or, or cloud or AWB, stick with it. Because if it is a little bit off to do a batch edit and change everything is going to be very easy. And the problem, the biggest problems in white balance is when it's not consistent and your client will see, you know, this one's a little bit warm, this one's a little bit cool, and then they'll start to notice something and feel a little bit like what's going on here. Okay. In regards to the actual picture, this is a beautiful image. It really is. You've got a beautiful triangle over here. You've got lovely movement going in this way. You've got a balanced, uh, a balanced, um, uh, a gentle balance shot, sophisticated picture. Um, you've nailed the focus. The stats um, are just not perfect. You could have been at 200 ISO or uh, one thousandth of a second. That with your camera, I would recommend that. You didn't need to be at 400 or 2,000 per second, uh, but they're basically uh, basically perfect. Just could have been a little bit different. Um, excellent. Very good. Okay. So now let's look at these pictures here. You are shooting, this is again with your old lens. Okay, good. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with the issues and then we're going to change, well, then we're going to, um, we're going to talk about the positive things. Okay, the issue, the biggest issue here is this background. Bad background of no graphical value whatsoever this tarmac here that should not be in your picture it would be much better again i don't know the situation where you are i can't see anything more than the actual picture uh, but to have gotten somewhere where you had green all over here or bushes in the background or something would have been much better than this bland gray overexposed tarmac okay so we don't have comparable exposure over here here we do but we just have no graphical, like we just have no graphical value. Now you've put everyone together quite nicely. Okay. A couple of tips that would help things is this little boy should be moving inwards and this, his shoulder, this shoulder should be moving inwards and this little girl, her shoulder should be moving inwards as well. That could be done by a couple of ways. If she put this hand on this girl's shoulder and he put this hand, his hand here on Oh, didn't mean to do that. Oh, quick stop. Oi. Okay, so if he put this hand here over here, and then maybe put this hand on her or something like that, that would make all the difference. Okay, that really would make all the difference. I would also try and have the kids, these two kids at the back, leaning forward as much as they can. In Hebrew, we say tsamud, which means like stuck to each other. So say, come on, get your tummy, make sure your tummy is pressed against your sister's back, something like that. This is eight children, okay? Please note that this is a difficult picture to take. It's not, you are now, you, I really appreciate that you are moving out of your comfort zone because we can see clearly that you've nailed taking individual pictures. That's great, but it's easy. Okay, this is now a whole new world of complexity, much, much more difficult. And the fact that you're doing it is the best thing, okay? So you're obviously looking at this picture thinking this isn't the most amazing picture, um, and it isn't, but this is takes a lot of practice, okay? This is at least eight times as difficult as taking a picture of a uh, of a single child, okay? Um, like I said, the background really does distract you posed really it's it's really it's nice it is nice like i said it would make a difference to bring this kid around and this kid around but the general the general shape here is uh, is quite pleasing okay it's good good okay let's move on so now this is an issue that is difficult to deal with when you have a little kid like this is that she is the problem if she wasn't here let's just cross her out if she wasn't here that would be a great shot <laughs> 
one second. It really would be a great picture if we cropped her out. I'd love that picture. However, she's there, and that's a problem. What's the rule that means that that's a problem? Is the rule is that heads need to be as close to each other as possible. She is like a um, like a loose kind of a loose kind of thing that's just fallen out. I love the placing of the light. You, you're doing great here. You've got a great background. Um, what you could have done to have affected this, made this a little bit better, was for somebody to be holding the little girl, either her or probably need a bigger sister to pick up this little girl. But that would have made that would have made all the difference. That's the problem here. But I definitely appreciate this rim light. That's great. And I can all, I also appreciate the fact that her hand is here, her hands here. That I would probably be putting this hand here, holding the baby's hand because that would help move things around that way. But you are thinking excellently, really. Rocha, I'm very, I'm, I'm proud of you, because you really, I can see that you're really, you've really, uh, you're really thinking. This is great. Okay, this is a shame. You're just overexposed here. Just simply overexposed. Um, also, if it was correctly exposed, I'd probably crop in a little bit more like this as well. Um, some people like these kinds of pictures. It might work if you made it black and white. It's okay. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of overexposure, but a lot of people are. So, um, but anyway, that is the issue here. You are shooting in manual. Um, yeah, all I would have done is taken off a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, shutter speed, gone down to a 320, probably a 400th. Um, one other thing to notice uh, to note is the stats here. These stats are great. Okay. These stats are great. 200, 5.6 is giving you a lot of, and you didn't have your wider, you didn't have a wider lens, a wider aperture. So that was, you were stuck there anyway. Um, now this is good. We've got rid, oh, she looks so much like one of my daughters. That's amazing. Wow. Um, we've gotten rid of this little girl who was her, I think. I think so. Yeah, for sure. Um, so now this works. Now, it's a little too much. She's turned too much. This hand, okay, firstly, crop in a little closer, okay? But please don't, you need to feel super, what's the word, accomplished by having done this because it's this is great stuff. This is great beginning stuff and you're going to be fantastic, okay? I would put this girl's hand around her and this girl's hand, oh, and this girl's hand, obviously around her, that would move them out a little bit more and they would end up, everything would look a lot more relaxed. Okay, it could be as well that I would swap this kid with this kid. Okay, the little boy with the little girl. Um, and then, well, actually, I would move him here and I would move her here. And I'd move him here, and then it would be um, then it would be grey, white, grey, white, um, and also the sizes would be a little bit more comparable. He would be over here like this, and it would just make it a little bit more um, a little bit more uniform. But this is really really good stuff. This is really good stuff. I'm really really I'm really happy about this. Excellent, excellent stats are good. Nice rim light, good background. Bring it on. Excellent, Rocha. Excellent. Okay. Be careful here. This is not nice. This is not nice. This is not nice. The the light has to be coming from behind. It's no good when it's coming from the side like this. That is messy light. You needed to have come around and to have um and to have gotten the light more square on their backs. One thing that I would also be recommending is this kind of framing with like a blob here and a blob here is not good you need to have the whole thing filled with all of this light green okay you really if you want to frame something with this kind of like out of focus um, um, forward frame then I would foreground frame make it fill everything poke your lens through like literally go into a little hole here poke your lens through and uh, do it like that okay this I think is an excellent shot Stats are great. Could be at 200 at a 500th of a second. Um, the composition is lovely. There's a lot to do here. You could do a huge edit here. Maybe we'll edit this picture uh, in Lightroom. But there's definitely a lot to do with the edit. Composition is lovely. 
this triangle here is a huge movement inside um, he's got a slight movement this way but because of this massive arrow going to this direction you've balanced it beautifully excellent intelligent photography so let's whack this out one second let's push this all the way we're going to do a this just lends itself so much to a crazy sunset edit I've probably shown you the technique before, but I'm going to do it here anyway. It really is just screaming, do this to me. Okay, so we're going to use this paintbrush. I've created a brush called Magic Magic Hour Paintbrush. Okay, straight away we're just going to completely like dream this out, I suppose you could say. That's a nice way of saying it, dream it out. Um, I'm going to go over here a little bit and we'll delete it off of him actually. Even over here one second now we're going to erase i'm going to do this with a mask that should work out quite easily is that a bit obvious Mm, it is a little bit obvious. Okay, that'll do a thing. Okay, mm, a little bit more over here. Let's just see where the mask actually is. That's okay, it doesn't really matter. Let's take the auto mask off here. Just make sure we get rid of everything. Mm, messy. Might as well do this properly. Let's just, I'm just going to add it. There we go. I think from the distance this is going to be fine. Yeah. Okay, now. If you look here, that was the clarity down, sharpness down, exposure was up a little bit. Now, this is the cool bit. We're going to put in this orb. Now, I've created this already. I call it the magic hour radial. It whacks the exposure up, the highlights down, this whites up. And then we're going to put this over here. We're going to create like the sun is streaming through. I think I'm actually going to put the exposure up a bit more. You see, there we go. That's a little too big, I think. There we go. One second, let's just get out of here. What difference? <laughs> it was just screaming, do this to me. It was very simple, very simple. Like you saw, you can copy the, the tools as you saw what I used. Um, but when you've got a big open space like this over here, then you can definitely do something like that. And it could also be an idea to drop this. I quite like the um, I quite like the crop that you gave, but let's just try here. Let's just see what happens if we pull this down a little bit. One second. Oh, we can... We have to go up to grab the radial tool. One second. Edge, there it is. Drag this down. And then we crop. So after seeing that, I think we might drop this down, the exposure down a little bit more. And maybe expand it out a drop actually there we go good okay um, so we went from here to here that is called a big Lightroom edit big Lightroom edit anyway excellent work um, Brocha fantastic I'm so happy that you're pushing outside of your comfort zone and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what you do for us next week keep up all the good work